This program has been made possible by a grant from the UCF Office of Research and Commercialization. The UCF Office of Research and Commercialization is committed to moving the discoveries of our faculty and students from ideas to innovation to realization. By moving research from the laboratory to the private sector, we are helping to diversify Florida's economy and helping to bring high paying jobs to our state. This program presents some examples of our research and our efforts to transition this research to the private sector. Welcome once again to Zenith. I'm your host, Ed Hyland, and today an exciting look at the world of research from several different perspectives. We'll see how a computer program was developed to help solve a medical problem and why an engineer may have a hand in making sure future hip replacement joints keep you walking for years on end. Plus, we know solar can save you energy and money. Today on Zenith, the latest technology that is designed for home use. And best of all, it's affordable now. Details later here on Zenith. University of Central Florida Technology Incubator, cultivating success through creative ideas, performance, and partnerships. Because there's a lot of people doing a lot of work every day, and that's what everybody brings together. So it wouldn't be successful without the partnerships. The UCF Technology Incubator is a university-driven community partnership providing early-stage technology companies with the enabling tools, training, and infrastructure to create financially stable, high-growth enterprises. With locations in the Central Florida Research Park adjacent to the UCF campus in East Orlando and in downtown Orlando, the UCF TI is home to over 50 new and innovative high-tech companies. That's up from 12 companies when the incubator opened its doors in 1999. The incubator has created hundreds of high-paying jobs in Central Florida with an average annual salary of $59,000. <laughs> Our clients include Nanospective specializes in advanced materials characterization, utilizing the University of Central Florida materials characterization facility. Nanospective performs nanoscale and macroscopic property evaluation. We're kind of unique in the sense that we're all UCF graduates. We have firm foundations here at the university with the facility and with the incubator. The UCF Technology Incubator, promoting optimal corporate growth and making a significant contribution to the economic development of the region's high technology sector. Modern medicine can easily replace damaged or arthritic hip joints, but while the artificial joint can be very efficient, it does have a limited life. Finding a way to make a stronger, longer-lasting joint design was the challenge tackled by a graduate student and his computer. These lines of code aren't for just any old program. They're helping solve a common medical problem. Professor Larry Chu explains. Hey, Christian, i got an interesting problem here. Currently, when we do hip uh, joint replacement, uh, we have a ball and socket joint, and this is a typical replacement where we, that we stick into the femur. The problem that we have is that the titanium rods here are too stiff and the bones don't need to work as hard. Therefore, it atrophies. Uh, what we are trying to do is allow these uh, titanium rods to bend and to be less stiff so that the bones have to work a little harder. Okay. You know a lot of optimization. Any thoughts or ideas on how we could do this? Uh, looks like you can change a couple things. You can change the material, but maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to stick with 
the materials that are biocompatible, that work well in the body. So it looks like well, we would have to change the geometry, either um, make it a little thinner or hollow it out. If I hollow a typically solid implant, I make it less stiff. A less stiff implant means more work for the bone and longer life for the implant. The bone is no longer shielded from its normal load. So this program that I've developed will run new geometries continuously through trial and error and it'll find the best one. I think of it like the, the Rubik's Cube where there are infinite possibilities, ways to turn it, but there's always one best way. So by trying all of them, eventually we'll come up with the best solution, the ideal internal geometry for this implant. Great. So we can do that right now and see what develops. This animation illustrates the program's progression through all possible geometries. The result? An implant closely matching bone properties. This resulting implant design will last longer and give greater peace of mind to all patients. The new design is being evaluated and refined for future testing. Well, up next, even though it is known to save money, investing in solar cells hasn't been very efficient until now. How new research is bringing solar energy to your home and making it a do-it-yourself project. Stay with us here on Zenith. cells, solar cells, no one doubts they can save us energy and in the long run, money. But the upfront expense has been an obstacle. We caught up with Issa Batarse, who is working to change that by making a conversion to green power as easy as a visit to your local home improvement store. Dr. Batarse, if you would just kind of give us an idea of where, where you're, what's your focal point on research right now? Yeah. Our research area focuses on power electronics, and power electronics means you take some energy and try to condition it, condition it in such a way that you will deliver to a given load and, and, and improve the efficiency, reliability, and the system to do the energy conversion have to be small and light uh, and be able to do that, as I said, highly efficient. And so the, the research focus on that building block that will process energy from a source, whether it's a battery, solar, or any kind of uh, energy, and then we take that processing uh, mechanism, so we deliver to what's needed the load, it's like maybe a uh, Cisco system, communication system, it's a laptop, it's a desktop, it's a server, and then we, uh, we're trying to do that uh, in such a way that the entire system and, and its conversion become enhanced. Uh, if you take that box of processing that energy, it's a complicated box. It uh, requires a lot of background in electronics and devices and communication and electromagnetics. So it's a multidisciplinary research in order to be able to do that energy conversion. Uh, so we have students who are interested in, in control and topologies and communication area and in power and systems. And some of them are in drives area. Uh, so it's a, it's a broad research field. Lately, in the last few years, we've been focusing on uh, two main applications, the telecom application area, where we focus on energy conversion at a smaller kind of power. We did work for a company called Emerson. Uh, they have uh, Aztec Power under Emerson. And they wanted to deliver uh, high power density, almost uh, reaching uh, 50 watts within about one inch square. And to be able to do that for telecom application, uh, Cisco routers and so forth. That, uh, uh, that was a success story uh, through the funding from the high tech corridor and the private sector in Orlando and supporting Emerson. We were able to produce two products that actually became in the market. And uh, probably they claimed was the highest power density ever created. And uh, several patents were issued uh, with UCF. And the second project was for Intel. Intel wanted to deliver power to the Pentium processor very fast. The more they try to get application to run faster, the more energy has to be available at the processor. We did that a couple of years. We came up with one uh, new topology. Now they extended the project for the next three years 
to be able to do the same technology for portable devices. And the second component, the research has been solar and energy conversion. Um, we, uh, we had some technology that can be easily moved into the solar uh, space. So a company came to us uh, with uh, uh, venture capital support. They raised, I think, $14 million, and they took some of our patents, and they licensed agreement with UCF. And today, actually, you see some of the, uh, my students and graduates are working for that company called Petra Solar. And their objective is to, to take uh, solar energy and turn it to electricity to connect to your grid. But we're trying to do it in a very cheap way compared to what's existing today's system. Today's system costs 6 to $9 an hour, uh, a watt. So if you want to have 3 kilowatt, it's a $30,000 system. What we're trying to do is that change the architecture of delivery and change the way the electronics interface to the photovoltaic so that we can bring the cost down to probably half if we succeed in eliminating some of the costs in installation and, and maintenance. And I think we have some work done at the university that the company can use. And also, uh, I'm so proud that three of my graduates joined the startup company. And they will be opening their research. Now they are working from our lab temporarily. But uh, hopefully, within a week or two, they will be moving to the research bar next door and uh, getting their R&D actually done at, uh, at the, in the research part. And their headquarters in terms of business and marketing will be in New Jersey. That's really a new success story. We're very proud of the, uh, this kind of uh, startup company coming out of research. Um, they will be providing research funds besides hiring our graduates. Uh, this is in the making because the company just began early May, so only two months now. Uh, and this, uh, the last component has been with the, with the Army and Navy Air Force. We've been very active in supporting some of those research through the companies in the research part. So very quickly, one project deals with the solar uh, for satellite application. You're trying to take solar input to multi-source, condition the power, get, create the DC to support all your load on a satellite. Uh, we did that for, the, uh, for NASA for several years, for uh, the Air Force for several years. Now NASA came back and they want to have what happened if you have multi-input? How do you process it with a battery, solar, maybe more than one solar panel or sections of the panel and all have to be conditioned to support the load? Uh, so th this has been funded phase one and we're going after phase two jointly with the company. Uh, and then we had a good project, with the, with the two projects with the Navy. Uh, the Navy wanted to know how can you harvest energy from the backpack of a soldier? Uh, when he or she walked around and then can you harvest a few watts. Uh, we had a couple of students working on the project. Uh, we finished it over a one year period. And the second one is specialized, highly specialized DC power supply uh, for um, used to, to scan the bottom of the oceans. And this kind of energy requirements are unique and special because it has to be very fast and quick charging the capacitor. And uh, the one that has been running for three years is for the uh, hybrid electric vehicle for the Army. And I think we have a good success story there because we believe it will lead to commercialization. Uh, we have a charger uh, unit that charges the battery, spin off from some of the work done jointly between the Air Force project and the Army. And then we have a private sector like John Deere coming in to us to take whatever we did for the Army to apply to their uh, electric uh, systems. So that, that project also uh, is going to hit the market hopefully soon. Of all those projects, it's hard to decide which direction to take on the interview here. But uh, first, I want to ask: Is there a key commonality among all the projects? I mean, you're talking about solar, you're talking about, uh, you know, backpack. Uh, I mean, you're talking about all these different projects. Is is there a key single element there? Energy or? conversion. Okay. Do it cheaply, efficiently, and reliably. And with that. And with that theory, that theory in mind, some of this you were mentioning earlier uh, is coming from, from the young minds here at UCF, from, uh, from your students. Uh, how, how much input, uh, uh, how important is that input to, to the work? Yeah, very good question. I, I think uh, we were joking earlier. I think they do the work, I get the credit. But it's really, I, I want to take this opportunity to thank my students for the hard work. Really, the credit goes to them. They spend days and, and nights here. Uh, they work very hard to do that. I think this is important for society. If you think of improving the efficiency 2-3% in every power electronic system that energy goes through it, you're talking about millions, millions of savings, let alone kilowatt hours we are saving, but I'm talking about dollar amount in, term, in terms of uh, cost. But I think when it comes to energy conversion, if you can improve that and make the cost, uh, you bring the cost down, you will allow a renewable energy system to take off. And so our impact in research is that we would like to see more 
average person, you know, for residential application, use power electronics or use renewable systems to power their homes and the commercial sector as well. So I think the all the students are they know that they will fit into the marketplace with no no problem at all. In fact, the work to try to 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 produce energy and to to try to get rid of the relying on uh, you know the Middle East oil or, uh, or anywhere in the world, it's it's not uh, healthy for our uh, country. The security uh, on one hand, the cost on the other hand, and being unreliable all the time, and uh, to be cut off, reduced, and so forth. It's not a good thing to put the U.S. in. So I think our research mission and vision uh, lies easily with what our national government trying to do in, in a way that energy should be in the forefront and we should reduce our uh, reliance on foreign oil. And I think uh, students know that this is what they want to be in. It's a challenging field because what do you, you want to be in the mechanical side of it, in the electrical side, do you want to be in the control side? the topology side, you know, it's multidisciplinary. So students come from different backgrounds to fit into this renewable energy picture. But the bottom line is, of course, what we do is go straight. Most of what we've been doing the last few years is for residential and commercial application that uh, average person should use. Of course, in the other uh, uh, side, uh, it's military. We, we do a lot of work for, as I mentioned, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and NASA, because what we, what a success story for the federal government through that special program, small business program, you can help the private sector, and that's the objective. And the, the, our government has this great law, you know, you do uh, intellectual property you generate it, it'll go back to the private sector, because we're not interested as a government to, to market it. So our students benefit, the local companies we have, they benefit, and, uh, and the, ultimately the, the, the society will benefit. I want to touch on the local companies because uh, uh, obviously we're saying a lot of the research begins here. Uh, it starts at, at, at the college level, the university level, and then it gets to a point where perhaps it's starting to grow and uh, there's the incubator process. There's the new companies that tend to spin out of that. So, so it, it becomes a, a, a domino effect uh, for, for growth in, in local industry and, and perhaps something that is going to produce something that we can use in our homes. I think this is the best thing happened to UCF. I, I think uh, our Vice President, MJ Swallow, Tom O'Neill, uh, VP uh, for research, they, they, and their committee or their group, they are leading the high-tech area, it has done wonders, I believe, for the university. First, and in my case, two stories. One, in 2001, applied uh, advanced power electronics company was started, IPCOR, and the company in the last five, six years probably had an average of five to 800,000 a year of R&D activity. And guess who's running it? The students, the graduates of UCF. One, you know, one of them is still doing his PhD, but the others graduate. They all, every brain power we bring to that company comes from our labs. So the students see how can your t uh, research and prod or research component become a product. And that transition is very tricky. Very few universities succeeded in taking what's done in the lab and move it to the private sector. So I want my students to have that experience. If you talk to my students, they all know how to write proposals, they think of product, and they don't just do theory. I, I, uh, we've gone away from just too much basic research and theory into more application. And this company is in the research park. In fact, uh, they've been very successful. All these projects I mentioned, Navy, Army, Air Force, are coming through that company to our research uh, uh, lab at the university. Second company came last May, as I mentioned, uh, this just a few months ago, and that's Petra Solar, through a more professional way of fundraising. The, they, they brought in a, a very experienced person who knows how to, to talk to uh, VCs, and they were able to raise $14 million to, to start a company. They will be in the research park. Guess whom they hired? All our graduates, except one senior person they brought who had uh, years of uh, experience in power supply design. Other than that, our graduates are, are working with that senior person locally to run their uh, R&D development, to build that in what we call inverter. It takes the DC power of the sun and change it to AC to connect to your grid and able to, to be able to have power when there is no grid power from the utility. So uh, yes, the students uh, are the workers in those companies and they are spin off from the, from the research. Without the high-tech program, which allows you to, if, if I go to IPCOR or Petra Solar, I say, put 
100K, you might get 50 match minimum or 75K. Or a special deal, maybe if you show me, uh, you know, you have a special requirement, we might do more. That's a very good incentive for the private sector to be here. And it allows me as a faculty to fund, instead of one, I'll fund one and a half or two. And this has worked very well for me. In fact, what you saw today in the lab, probably most of them either funded 25% all the way to 100% in the high-tech money. So the company uh, you know, loves it. Uh, they love it because it's a win-win situation for both of us. Our thanks again to Dr. Batarse, who's also working on fuel cells as another form of alternative fuel. Well, before we run out of gas, we've got just enough time left for our research minute. Several years ago, we made a little, a little uh, semiconductor laser that could transmit about a, a trillion bits of information per second. Now we have a, a new type of the semiconductor laser, which uh, immediately is saying that we could at least do two trillion bits of information per second. To give you a feel for what a trillion bits of information per second is, that would be about a quarter of a million uh, cable TV channels if each cable TV channel is using com a compressed digital format. And so, you know, you probably say, you know, what are you going to do with a quarter of a million cable TV channels? Uh, that sort of boggles the mind, but people use laptops and like to get on and off the internet, and their laptops runs at a, a speed of about a, a billion bits of information per second. And at UCF, in a few years, we'll have, you know, about uh, 50,000 students, and if everyone wants to have their laptop up and running at UCF, we'd need uh, 50, 50 trillion bits of information per second. And so this one terabit per second laser is, in fact, 50 times too slow. And that is all the time we have today for Zenith. But look for us again on your local cable system or check us out on the web at www.zenith.ucf.edu. The goal of research is to better understand the world around us. Our goal is to be a window to that world. I'm Ed Highland. Thanks for joining us.